Hey everybody! Welcome to the internet. Probably not your first time here. If it is, where have you been? Anyway, today we're going to go to the Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama and see what's new and try to have some fun along the way. So with that, now it's time for more analysis. Alright, so I got my NASA hat on. We're off to the Space and Rocket Center. Space and Rocket Center. Oh, there's two. Any, many, mighty, low. Okay. Oh, my job. Oh, let go. Any, many, mighty. Hey, Mo! Go. And we're off. We'll be there in five minutes. Woohoo! So behind me is the SR-71 Blackbird, and I think they've come up with some other name for it. I don't know, but it's big and cool. Oh, I'm sorry, the A-12 Blackbird? Oh, slash SR-71. See, I'm not brain damaged. So once you get here, you're going to have to come to the NASA Visitor Center, which is right behind me, and you get your tickets. So kind of come in from over there, and you walk right through and to there. All right, this section contains things that have been uh, inventions that were made here at the Marshall Space Flight Center that have benefited humankind. Includes all the patents and all that other cool stuff. All right, so apparently I have a relative that invented a jetpack. So check this out. TM Moore, the jet vest. There's the jet vest right there. Here's the pattern. And apparently, I don't know, kind of looks like me. Might be related somehow. We'll see. All right, so if you're wondering where the flying car is, it's right there. They've already invented it. All right, so interesting fun fact, um, some of the first astronauts were actually monkeys. See? Monkeys. So yeah, that's just kind of creepy back there. Oh. I feel like he's going to attack me. So 3PO, why are you so anal retentive? So, uh, yeah, that's a robot. This one too? What? What is it? Is it over here? I don't know. I don't know who that little guy is. I know. It makes me mad too. Let's 
she gets to work. She gets barely moved. So what's the what's the uh, the, the battery life on, on Rosie? Three here? hours on the actual main motors. Uh, we run a separate battery for the speaker. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I've run her three solid hours, and she, she slows down a little bit, but, but it's still got torque, and I can get her back home. When she gets to where she just barely moves, I have to slow her. <laughs> start heading back to the home because I don't want to carry her. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, she, she, she looks a little beefy. Well, she's been here about four years, so she just uh, has to stay in storage most of the time. They just got her out really about uh, six months ago and got her out with me. So new controllers on her, new motors, new battery. Oh, okay. So she's she's been upgraded. She's upgraded. All right, cool. Oh, awesome. Yeah. 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 Things that they have here is the uh, Team Redstone, which is the Redstone Arsenal, where they invent all kinds of stuff. So this is the future of war fighting in here. All kinds of missiles. Oh my God! It's a stormtrooper. Man, where was that stuff when I was in the army? Okay, so if you ever want to know what astronaut food looks like, there it is. Man, that looks nasty. <laughs> All right, so after dinner, what do you do? Well, what do you do if you're in space and you got to go to, you know, number two? Bang. That looks uncomfortable. Okay, so right now we're in a scale model of the International Space Station. So, it's pretty cool. All kinds of cool stuff in here. You can actually look out there and see space. I'm floating. Help me. This is what it looked like if I was floating, actually. It's about as close as I'm gonna get. Oh, don't touch that! No. <laughs> He's just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're okay. <laughs> okay. I finally found some peace and quiet in here. It is really, really loud in there. Um, but I actually made it to the part of a space camp where the space camp kids learn how to do all of their space camp kid stuff. I don't know what they do. I didn't go to space camp. Wish I did, but I didn't. Anyway, that right there is what's coming next. Stay tuned. Okay, so we've got just about um, 45 minutes before our movie starts. Uh, movie starts at noon. So we're gonna go grab us a bite to eat at the Mars Grill. Start. So here's the menu for the Mars Grill. Looks like some basic uh, snacks and cheeseburgers, hamburgers, chicken tenders. Pretty reasonable looking. So, oh, you could donate five dollars to paint the Saturn V at any register, which it does. It does need a paint job. I'm gonna donate five dollars. You should too.
like they're doing their own hydroponics here. Failing miserably. You gotta have some light. It has to have light. Okay, so I got the uh, the salad bar and the little mini astronaut there drink, which is just you know sort of pop. Uh, actually, I just got a unsweet iced tea, but you can get anything I want. I got a Coke product, things like that. And then uh, I got the salad, which uh, was pretty pretty good. So we'll see how it goes. Looks delicious. It was uh, relatively inexpensive. So they have these. Uh, Biodegradable bowls. Just noticed that. Would the uh, astronauts biodegradable? No, I don't think so. But the bowl is. Also, I have a little grab and go here for snacks on the go. Some sandwiches, desserts, some drinks. Okay, so our movie starts in uh, about 15 minutes. Ooh, 10 minutes. Better get a move on, we'll be late. You may be asking yourself, are there rides at Space Camp? Well, yeah, there sure are. They got a uh, centrifuge, essentially, which is like a Gravitron, and the slingshot, which, based upon all the screaming, is up and running today. Fascinating fact here that they have a garbage can right outside the exit to G-Force Accelerator. This is what's known as Puke Alley. Okay, yeah, I forgot. We've got a movie to go to. Better hurry. Alright, so we're here arriving at the Space Dome IMAX. Here's a 70 millimeter film. And we're going to see a movie about the planet with footage taken from the International Space Station. But first, I gotta get some popcorn. And here's another interesting fact is that I don't know diddly squat about that rocket behind me. Alright, so there's like no line for the moonshot, which is uh, right up there. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's the moonshot. No line. Saturn V rocket that's out here in front. And yeah, yeah, I could probably use a paint job. Well, we're doing it for the Rocket Preservation Fund. As you can see, it's still in progress. It is not a visit to the Space and Rocket Center unless you picked up some space ice cream. So for the astronaut ice cream, they've essentially got so they've got vanilla, and they've got Neapolitan, and they've got Neapolitan, and they've got Neapolitan. Oh, and vanilla. Okay, so two flavors. So you can have any flavor you want as long as you want Neapolitan or vanilla. So yes, that's the NASA meatball. And 
a hamburger flipper? So they've got this cool little station here for kids to essentially take these uh, straws and fill them with uh, flavored sugar. So, uh, pucker powder, powder, candy art. Oh, that'll keep them up for a while. Oh, look, you can even get a little uh, NASA Astro Dog handkerchief. Bowls and a little NASA leash. Neat. This Astro Dog. Oh, look, a little astronaut boot. Here they come. Okay, so this is the uh, gift area that I was just in just now. Now I'm fixing to go to the Davidson, uh, Davidson Center and you get kind of these little stairs. Before that, we got a little quote here on the wall. Warner Von Braun. And a little preview of the stuff that they're working on next for the future. Right there. That's fancy. Alright, so we're walking in here with an actual Saturn V. That thing is enormous. I don't know if I can give you the the grand scale of it all, but it's just huge. Alright, so we're gonna try to do a little scenery here. I'm gonna walk all the way down the center of this thing. Just so you can get an idea of how big this thing is. That was long. That is humongous. Whew. That's a long way down there. Got a uh, lunar rover here. It's used for folding testing here at Marshall. And there's the lunar excursion module. Yeah, sometimes people ask me, uh, well, they don't ask me, but I've heard them ask people that, uh, why, why is it uh, covered in, uh, like, gold Christmas wrapping? And uh, the answer to that is, it's not Christmas wrapping, it's um, actually uh, gold Christmas wrapping, <laughs> essentially, but that is to help deflect the uh, radiation, protect the astronauts on the inside. Alright, so here's a little test and see if we can fold the rover. So I'm gonna say like that. Well, man, I'm like doing it wrong. Well, I am just failing miserably. Alright, that's good enough. That's good enough for government work. Sure, there we go. And done. Alright, so in this glass case is the Apollo 16 command module that brought back uh, three astronauts and 208 pounds of moon rocks. So, look at, look at all that damage. That's crazy. I hope they had a warranty for that. This, my friends, is a moon rock. Huh. It just kind of looks like all the other rocks. Oh, this side's special. It's flat. Or maybe they cut into it. I don't know. Maybe it's magic. Alright, so here's a little display of all the uh, astronaut suits. What they got to do to put them together and what they got on them and the whole nine yards. Way more information than I wanted today. Oh, look. Hands. <gasps> That's Buzz Aldrin's hands. Wow. 
He needs to wash his hands. Who says astronauts don't have fun? So they've got these cool little video games where you can practice laying a lunar module. And, uh, yeah, I haven't been able to do it yet. Okay, so this is the well, the paint job on the Saturn V should look like on the one outside. We've all seen the one outside. So if you can, please donate to the painting fund. Because nobody wants to see a ratty looking Saturn V. It's just un American. Man, that thing is ginormous. It's actually bigger than the SLS. I mean, not by much, but it's it's a little bit bigger than the SLS. I've seen the SLS. Um, this seems to be a little bit bigger. Not by much, but yeah, a little bit bigger. Right there. Hey Bob, did you check those TPS reports? Oh man, I forgot the TPS reports, man. Oh no, this, this thing's not gonna work. This thing's going to work. We're all going to die. All because of a few stupid TPS reports. Shame on you, Bob. Bob in the middle there. Here's uh, some historical items here for you. This is uh, Lady Bird's brick hat. She visited Marshall. Like in 1964. Alright, so this gives me the perfect opportunity to explain to you how rocket engines work. I fix computers. I don't know anything about rocket engines. Something that's really cool is that there is a cutout version uh, of the Saturn V here, so it gives you, you can kind of see all the different parts and what's inside of it. And essentially, it's basically just a big gas tank. That's really what the majority of this is. It's just a big gas tank. We have a little spot up front for people. And then dock into that. This is a Gemini capsule. Looks more like a, uh, from the inside, looks more like a jet engine or jet aircraft cockpit than anything else. A scale model here of a Mercury capsule. With one and only guy in there. Those Mercury capsules are essentially stuck on the end of a Redstone rocket. Which, those were brave gentlemen right there, boy, I'll tell you what. That's the inside of an actual Mercury Procedures Trainer that they used here at uh, NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. And a lot of sharp edges in there. <laughs> That's one small step for man, one giant leap for... Hey, wait a minute. I'm somewhere else. Wow, that's pretty big. Oh, look at that. Center. Sort of like a, uh, you know, a geographical representation of the Earth's surface as uh, seen from above. Wait, what is that? Miss Baker's gravesite? What the? Did somebody die here? Well, that's just horrible. Okay, so the uh, this shuttle body double, which was used as uh, testing out there at the Marshall Space Flight Center, 
that test stand right there, I work like right underneath of it. I mean, literally, like, like that's where I work. Not right there, in the building next to it. But it looms over me very ominously. But it's cool, because it's history. And history is cool. All right, so that building over there, that's where they do a lot of the uh, space camp uh, activities and graduation and things like that. And then for the bad kids, they put them in there. See the padlock? There's probably bad kids in there right now. Shame on them. That is a big orbiter right there. See, if you leave these things in the park too long, then, you know, this one here, maybe it gets with this one here, you know. And the next thing you know, you've got a uh, little baby aircraft coming up. So this right here is a Gulfstream 2 that they used for shuttle pilot training uh, to train them how to uh, land. They had the cockpit modified to match that of the space shuttle. And um, yeah, they got to fly around on a Gulfstream 2 all day. Nice little shot there for you. Got the Saturn, both the Saturn 1 and the Saturn 5, the uh, space shuttle, and uh, well, that's about it. There's other stuff in the picture, but nobody really cares about that stuff. Let's just focus on the rockets. All right, well, this is space camp. Apparently, uh, camp trainees and staff only pass this point. Yeah, they must have a really big security system. Oh. Huh. Huh. Well. Here is the uh, back end of the space shuttle. And uh, when I zoom back out, this, uh, it looks, that's the turd that it left by, behind it. Huh. You'd think they would have cleaned that up by now. All right, so I got my little uh, astronaut uh, cooler drink, that's what you're going to call it, and uh, essentially it's, um, you get free refills all day, so get the small one. See? Free refills. Space Coke. When you got a hat, son. 16 miles from the landing site. Discovery, he's looking good, rolling on to final. Move back, sir. Get the lights, we're now on the land, be happy. Two thousand feet above the runway, nose flaring, gear down the lock, deploying the drag chute. Discovery Houston, welcome home and congratulations on a great flight. Long range tracking cameras at the Kennedy Space Center. If I uh, didn't have a gift shop and screaming kids, gift shops and screaming kids. Yay. Well, the NASA stuff in here. Well, if you know or not, but that uh, that's like, they call that the meatball. I don't know why they call it the meatball. It's shaped like a meatball, but that's what they call it. The NASA. They call it the meatball. I'm hungry for spaghetti. All right, check this out. Little uh, coffee set that stacks up to uh, make a space shuttle. Neat. All right, so when you're leaving, you can actually uh, get your picture taken in front of a green screen. And they can do all kinds of really cool uh, displays and whatnot. They can put you in front of, uh, you know, the sun or on the space station. Or make you an astronaut, things like that. So, leave and come check that out. Okay, check this out. It's a uh, potato chip science book and stuff. 
So uh, it gives you, you know, the kids instruction on how to uh, fire off a propulsion pipe or uh, mix up a batch of spud crud. That's awesome. Where was that when I was a kid? Running low on sugar? We've got plenty. So let's see what they got. Uh, Neapolitan, 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 Neapolitan. Damn. All right, so I'm going to get the uh, rainbow ice dipping dots. All right, is that all I can do for you today? Just that and dipping dots, that's it? Yeah. Okay, I'll ask you to hit the green button first. Green button. Dipping dots. Rainbow. Taste the rainbow. All right, so we're in there. We had to figure out, uh, I saw it like Miss Baker gravesite. Miss Baker is a squirrel monkey. It was the first U.S. animal to fly in space and returned alive in 1959. I salute you, Miss Baker. Oh, and look, somebody left her a banana. A late banana. All right, so if you're coming out here, uh, they do have a Marshall Space Flight Center bus tour that you can go on. I don't know how much it is. I'll put the link down here in the uh, in the comment below. Um, but uh, that's where it leaves from. It's kind of right outside the front gate. You just walk down a little past, and you'll board the buses over there. All right, so that concludes our trip to the uh, Space and Rocket Center. Overall, I thought it was pretty fun. Anyway, everything else was uh, pretty cool. Not a lot of people riding the moonshot. Um, so, this time of year, it's a really great time to come. Um, so with that, I will uh, see you around. Oh, they're coming after me. I gotta go. Bye.